everybody can't sing that song with passion. You can only sing that when you when you mean it. Hmm. And it come across that way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's give our praise team. Heavenly Father, we thank you. One day, Lord, we shall see you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Colossians, the third chapter. Uh, last week we discussed spiritual goals, and I'm just going to tell you, I'm already working on my new spiritual goals. We, we brought your attention that. If you don't make obtainable goals in life, you'll never really accomplish that much. And, and so therefore, in fact, we say that in order for you to advance on your job, your, your goals have to match your boss's goal, and your boss's goal has to match the company's goal, and the company goes for the company to prosper. Yes. Amen. Everybody's goals have to line up with one another. <laughs> and we came to the conclusion that if you want to seek the kingdom of heaven, then you must set some goals. Yeah. We think that Jesus got goals, don't we? Yeah. We said that his goal was to get us back to the right relationship with our Father. Yeah. And so if those are his goals for us, then we got to make some goals to be with him. All right. Are you hearing me? Come on, man. You see, I noticed uh, one of Jesus' favorites saying, everyone knows, but if you listen to what Jesus is saying in Matthews, you understand a little better like this. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all these things to be added unto you. In other words, what Jesus is saying is, set your goals to line up with me and I'll get you to your earthly goals. I got five. Why? Because within a boss, you become a valuable employee of that company when your goals are focused on that company. Yeah. And if you're going to focus in Christ, then you got to set your goals and your aim got to be focused on the kingdom of heaven. In chapter 6, Paul says this. He said, you can do this by letting the word of Christ Abide, dwell. Y'all see it? First chapter 3, verse 6. Letting the word of God dwell in you richly. <coughs> that word abide means to live in you, to, to, to dwell in you, to stay in you. See, you can't come in and out the church and expect to prosper. Come on, man. You see, and when the word of God and dwells in you, it changes you. All right. And you become stronger not only in your faith, but you become better in your character. All right. And then you'll fall somewhere in chapter 3, verse 17. When Paul said, you will begin to do all things in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me help you. Mm -hmm. The word of God is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Come on. And if the word of God dwells in you richly and abundantly, then you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit of God, you're filled with the knowledge of God. And being filled with the knowledge of God, the word of Christ dwells in you richly. 
he will work himself out in you. And then you will have, that will make you have a positive effect in your home. And when God becomes a positive effect in your home, then he'll start working himself out of your home. And when he works himself out of your home, then your relationship between husband and wife are strengthened. Relationship between children are strengthened. Strengthening everybody in the home starts to prosper if God can use your home as a headquarters. Amen. Are you here? Amen. And when God uses your home as a headquarters, peace dwells in your home. Yes, yeah. And when peace dwells in your home, happiness dwells in your home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when happiness dwells in your home, productivity comes out of your home. Am I making myself clear? Yeah. You gotta put Jesus in your home. Yeah. But the problem comes. Come on, man. When we want God to be upheld in the church. Mm -hmm. When we set high standards for the pastor and his family. But when you get to your own house, you want to leave Jesus outside on the porch. Come on, right. Come on. Are y'all here? I might hear some cockies keys rattling in a minute. <laughs> if there's a need to set individual goals, then we also suspect, we all should set spiritual goals for our family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if there's no spiritual goals in the home, there's no spiritual order in the home. Yeah. All right. All right. And if your home doesn't have spiritual order, you open a door for a demonic disorder. Yeah. Oh, on. let me say it again. Come on, come on. Somebody, here. Somebody is going to rule your house. Come on, right? yeah. come on, come on yeah. come Far on. beyond you. Okay. And if you don't let Christ rule your house, mm -hmm. then you open a door for Satan to come take over. All yeah. right. Yeah. All right, I'm making myself clear. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know I don't get that many amen today, but mm -hmm. tell somebody, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Order is not enslavement. Order is not enslavement. But a scripture. In verse 13, Paul says it like this. Wives, submit to your own husbands as it is fitting in the Lord. Y'all see that? Uh -huh. Notice the text. Paul didn't say what everybody say Paul says. Paul says submit to your own husbands. He didn't say women submit to men, but submit to your husbands. See, Paul didn't even originate this thought. The thought came in Genesis 2.18. Turn your Bible to Genesis 2.18. Are y'all there? God said, I will make him a what? Helper. Comparable. What is comparable? Somebody equal with him. Amen. To him. You see, Eve was to help Adam do what God ordained Adam to do. Nowhere in Scripture does it say that God made woman to be a slave for man. All right. Nowhere. Nowhere in Scripture does it say that God made woman inferior of man. Come on, come on, teacher. But because of male chauvinistic got on the pulpit, Come on, man. we started teaching that women were subordinate to men. Mm -hmm. And that's a lie from hell. Yeah. Come on. God said, I'm going to make him somebody equal with him yeah. because Adam got some work to do for yeah. me. Yeah. And because he got some work to do for me, it ain't giving him to be alone. Yeah. That brother needs some help. Yeah. Come on. And that's why the Bible says when a man finds a wife, Yes, sir. He finds what? A good thing. Amen. Are y'all with me today? Amen. Tell somebody there's rules in the house. Yeah. It wasn't until the fall of man that God placed man in head of his economy. Look at Genesis 3 16. When you get it, say amen. Because I don't want to leave in this. God told Eve, and he, speaking of Adam, 
shall rule over you. And that's why Paul said that we must love our wives as the weaker vessel. Uh -huh. Now, if your husband is not doing what God ordained him to do, how can you expect a woman to follow you and to be disobedient to God? God ain't never told a woman to follow an unsaved man so that she will be led to hell. All right. If that's so, then there will be no reason for him to die on the cross for those and that are equal, are y'all hearing me, to one another. God has placed man in authority in his home, but that authority comes with an enormous price. Come on, man. An enormous responsibility in which man we don't answer to. And that's why I tell you, don't be so quick to jump up and say, I'm going to marry her without realizing what you're telling God you're going to do for her. Mm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All right. All right. Look at verse 19. Husband, love your wives and do not do what? Be bitter. Be bitter. Again, still my torch there. Yeah, yeah. The wife is to submit to the husband only to him who loves her. Mm -hmm. We would expect now somebody who's drunk to get behind the seat of a cop, the steering wheel, and a sober person get in the back seat with you. Mm -hmm. You would say, you're pretty stupid, woman. Right. That man is drunk. Get out that car. Let him, let him you drive. Yeah. So why should we expect a Christian woman to submit to a drunken man who's drunk and sin? Right. Are y'all following me? Because what happens if that he's the head of the house and he's drunk and sin, both of y'all going to end up crashing in hell. Are you hearing what I'm telling you today? Amen. Paul said in Ephesians 2, 5, 5, 25, he said, husband, Love your wife just as Christ also loved the church. But he ain't stopped there. He said, and gave himself for her. See, me and we like to submit part. But to love your wife as Christ loved the church means that man, you got to sacrifice for her. You have to learn to forgive her. You have to learn to protect her. And you must provide for her. You can never get tired of being there for her because Christ is never tired of being here for his church. Amen. And we must do all his brothers out of love. And you may be asking, how can a man do all that when a woman just, you know, I got to go home today. <laughs> it's through the knowledge of the love that Jesus Christ has to him. And this is why Paul said in 316, he said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. You see, I love girls from high school. But I yielded to sin, and therefore I can fully understand how much of a blessing she really was in my life. All right. But as soon as I understand how much God loved me, then I can appreciate her love that she's showing me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Right. It's hard for a man to love a woman who don't yet love God. Because if you can't understand the simple love of Jesus Christ, on, you ain't going to love that woman. Come on, come on, you will not sacrifice for that woman. You will not provide for her as Christ has ordained and is as a letter of the law. God said it's order not only in my house, but it's order that I have set throughout creation. Yes, man, you the head, but you must have order in your house. And the problem with most houses today, they, they just don't have no order. They don't want to put God in his equation first. Oh, I know it's going to be a long one today. 
Come on. But tell somebody, spiritual aura is not a slave. But a scripture. In verse 20, now Paul shifts to the offspring. Now, if you trust God to save you, if you trust God to provide for you, if you trust God to be heaven, your heavenly father, then you also must trust God to order. Come on, come on. In verse 20, Paul shifts to the children. Mm -hmm. He said, children are to obey both parents. Yeah. You see, too many times when children discover their parents are not in order with God, uh -huh. they take advantage of the situation. Yeah. Yeah. And when children take advantage of their parents who parents' spiritual dysfunctioning, they end up falling under the grace of God. Are y'all hearing what I'm telling you today? That's why every time you see young children dying today, let me put a foot over this, it, 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 it wasn't a practice of a mother bearing a child. But now it's standard that a mother can expect to bear a child before she dies because the world is in disobedience. Children are doing what they want to do because the parents are dysfunctional in their spiritual order in the home. Am I making myself clear? Yes. Oh, somebody just picked their keys up a minute. <laughs> and that's made why if you notice the, the news report, children always are dying in after they done snuck out at night. Children are always dying in the midnight hour or late at night. They're always dying in obscure places where they shouldn't be in the first place. And they're always dying in the acts of sin. The Bible says children are to obey both parents. And the Greek word obey implies a readiness to listen and to carry out parental instructions. <clears throat> then the Greek word for children is te tegna. And tegna means to, it doesn't include babies and toddlers, and it doesn't include, include people out of the home. It, it includes people who are in a youth age who are still on the roof of their parents. Yeah. You see, come on, come on. you really ain't grown until you're gone. Yeah. Come on, Let me just come on, say that. Come on, come on. Some of our children are acting like they're 50 when they really should be acting like they're 5. Yeah. And they find it out that because they are disobedient to their parents, and then they find themselves shortcoming, and your mama and daddy got to take, uh, can I talk to your children today? Your mama and daddy got to take all their hard-earned money to come bail you out or get you out of a mess in which you have created. And now because they got to take their hard-earned money that God has given them, then the house becomes a disarray. The lights go off, the condo go back. They can't do what they need to do because they can't function because of you. If you don't have spiritual order in your home, the home will never prosper mm -hmm. because you'll find yourself going into a mess of a loop. Am I here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Spiritual order is ordained by God so that his children will prosper. My mother used to always do what I say embarrass me. And Darius got a touch of this thing on my mom. <laughs> she had a whistle. You know what my police whistles? The big one, Will. And I'm on the basketball court. Getting ready so Mike can copy after me. I knew somebody would catch that. <laughs> and all the boys out there, you know how it is, you're talking smack. You down, you're tough. And mama always told me, don't let the street light catch you in the street. Y'all hear the mama like that? Yes. <laughs> Does God, your feet better be like this. You better be like, what that, what that man running 440? You better be like that man, a family, yeah. You better drop the mic and be like that, that sprint. Yes, and I ain't do it. I was hanging out with the boys. Mama's baby ain't gonna be embarrassed to go home. 
Well, one day, in the middle of the jump shot, the whistle was going off. The warden was calling me home. <laughs> and everybody on the court, man, that's your mama. That's your mama calling you home. The ball, my cousin said the ball was in midair and just stopped. <laughs> and I was gone. Because I understood there was consequences for not following the rules of the house. Our children need to understand there's consequences for not under the obeying the rules of the house. And a lot of times when God has put the house in order, if mama and daddy is not conducting spiritual order in the house, we lose our children to death. I can't tell you how many times I go home. And I can count the people who I grew up with are in prison. Come on, man. They in a grave. Yeah. And one or two of them still 40, 50 years old living in their mama basement. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of life and productivity is that? Yeah. You laugh at me because my mama had oil. Come on. I was embarrassed, yeah. but now I can laugh at you because you are dysfunctional in the kingdom of God and dysfunctional on land. Are you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. You see. Order brings prosperity. Yes, sir. And people want to know why they're not progressing in life? Because you out of order. Come on, come on. How, I, I know I wasn't gonna get a lot of that man, but you gotta preach the whole Bible if you like it or not. You gotta have order in a Christian home. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, come on. People put themselves on their door. God lives here, but God bless this home, and you not know they go cussing you out. <laughs> Take that off your bumper, you throwing them fingers. Let me stop. <laughs> Exodus said, Exodus 20 said this, honor your father and your mother. He didn't spit that thing up. No, he, didn't. Right. he said that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord is giving you. Children are to honor their parents for life. Yes, sir. That don't mean you get to a certain age you can tell your parents off. All right. Because you're cutting your own blessing off. Amen. Yes, but obeying them is a commandment for you who reside in a home. You see, there'll come a time that we must let our children go. There's come a time that children have to take responsibility for their own actions. Yes. You see, you want to be grown and you want to be grown, but then if you're gone, your parents have no responsibility for what you do. Because I heard somewhere in the Bible, I think it's in Genesis 2, 2, 2, 24, when it said a man shall leave his father and mother. Now you still honoring them. And join his wife. And they, obey oh Colossians 3, 18, shall become one in the flesh. Yeah, yeah. Your mama brothers can't live in your house. Yeah. All right. Your daddy's sisters can't live in your house. When you make that choice that it's you and them, you take that grown step out of your parents' house, then you must set up the parental production of spiritual order that your parents have set up in that house. And I hope that your parents have set some example for you so that you can live now a productive life and raise your children in a house of God instead of the house of hell. And I'm trying to make myself clear. Who did it have? I hear people say, I was forced to go to church when I was little, so I ain't going now. Your mama don't must do something. Come on. All right. You see, your parents didn't get to where they was at by staying out of church. That's right. Amen. If you go back over your parents' life and look at some of their friends that's around them, they haven't prospered as much as your parents prospered. So if your parents have shown you the way that Jesus Christ is the way, truth, and the life, yes. why in the world would you not bring your children under the same options of living in which God has already shown them? And we make so much a mistake when we hear the children of Israel saying that they have to leave their children something, and we think that's obtainable stuff. That is not obtainable stuff. What Israel was saying, what God was telling Israel, is to leave your children the knowledge of Jesus Christ so that they can make it in this hell-forsaken land called earth. If you don't teach your children 
talking about God, on, if you on. don't set the, uh, the set the appearance of God in yeah, the house, yeah. if you don't set the spiritual order in your house, your children gonna be like a Pandora box. They're gonna be open to anything yeah. that that goes. They wherever the wind blows, they gonna go yeah, because they don't have no order. Come if on. you can't expect your children to do what you what you do not do, yeah. and I'm trying to make myself any clear in Parents got to get off this thing. Do as I say, not as I do. That's a foolish thing. Because a child from the age of five start remembering everything that they children, that their parents do. And if you look in your child's life, if you was a good father, if you was a loving father, you would see that child mimicking what you and who you were. They're like a sponge. All they mind from the age from zero, whatever that they're born, until they leave your house, they're watching everything that you do. And if you a wayward person, you're in and out of church, you have no consistency to God. You, they don't see you praying. They don't, they don't see you fasting. They don't see you tithing. They don't see you active in church. They don't see that you you know how to put the bottle down or smoking that stuff that messed your head up. They, if they don't see all that, then what do you expect for your children to come out to be like? And that's why God said there's order in the house of God. And I don't know about you, but my house is the house of God. You see, I think Joshua Get that thing right. Yes, right. Yeah. He said, I don't care what they doing over there. Yeah. Come on, come on. I don't care what my forefathers did. Yes. I don't care what my neighbors look like. Yeah. Right. But as far as me and my house, yeah. yes. we gonna serve the Lord. Yes. Yes. And see, I tell you, I told you before, you can't come to 443. I'm not even talking about for a weekend and it's Sunday morning and you're behind me in the bed. You gonna get up out that bed and you gonna find yourself in the house of God because I know what God has already done for me. I know what God has already done for my house. I know what God bought me and my wife from. I know what God has took us through. So why would I let you come in my house all right, all right. and disrespect my God that I serve? Everybody gonna get up on Sunday morning. Yes. Everybody, Everybody. Yes. gonna work in God's house. Yes. I'm only talking about my house. See, I can't get in your house. I'm only your pastor, but I advise you in your house. All right. All right. Set some order. Yes. Be an example. Mm -hmm. And give your children a chance to live a righteous life. Yes. All right now. Don't your children deserve that? Amen. People say, I love my children, but why ain't you take them to church? All right. Mm -hmm. I love my children, but don't even share a Bible scripture with them. I love my children, but don't even show them a righteous way. How do you love something if you believe that those who are unsaved will spill and spend eternal hell? They like an eternal hell. What you telling your children, I really don't care nothing about you. I want you to go to hell. I'm not trying to be just straight. Can I talk to you just like a father? Amen. But notice Paul turned back to the head in verse 21. He said, children obey both parents, but the father has the primary responsibility, and but the father will answer for the actions of his house. All right, all right, all right. When Adam and Eve messed up, God didn't come down in a whirlwind and call for Eve. He called for Adam. Yes, he did. Now Adam didn't stick up for God and allow Eve to do what she wanted to do. But Lord have mercy, when judgment came, when God came, started walking through the, through, through the garden. Yes, sir. Come on, Jesus. Adam was sitting behind a rock, shaking behind a bush, scared, because he knew he had an answer to the God. And I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to take the blow in my house for something that I didn't put in order. <laughs> now, if I tell you and you still choose to disobey, now I got to make a decision if you're going to live there or not. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But Adam was called by God. And you be true with that. He's the same God yesterday as he is today. The same God is going to call Adam to respond to what goes on in that house. Adam, where are you? I'm going to say, I'm here, Lord. Shaking, sounding like a typewriter, like God in the way he's at. 
So how do you know you sin? Well, that woman. I said, oh, no, brother, I didn't, I didn't put that woman in charge. I, I, I didn't tell yeah, yeah. that woman what to do. But see, the problem is, it's too many men not studying the word of God. So you can't tell your woman what to do. All right. All right. And in the end of all this, you too macho to come to church. You trying to work too hard instead of working towards God. And so now the woman has to step up and be the leader of the house. And you get mad because she has her own identity. But you didn't have a form an identity. Come on, come on. And so now you're mad. Right. And now you and her can't get along. And every time she comes to the house of God, we ain't got to go back up there for her. Well, you should be sitting next to her like Adam was sitting next to Eve. All right. I give Adam one thing. He was with Eve when conversation came. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As a father, if the love his wife, he also must spend time in love his children. One of the greatest pictures in our house, other than that big old portrait of myself. Uh, <laughs> one of the greatest pictures I always look at in my house is my picture of my children. Because they come from us. Those are seeds that we left behind, that God blessed us with. And then there's another picture. It's one of me and my daughter was, she was a Girl Scout. And I took her to the prom, a Girl Scout prom. What one of my own? Father Daughter Day. Father Daughter Day. And I look at that. Mm. I was her first date. All right. And so now, Keon has a lot to measure up to. <laughs> now, he ain't going to be able to film and shoot it. <laughs> but I let him get in. I right, hear what I'm saying. Men, we have to nurture our daughters. Yes, sir. Yes. If you don't want a man come back doing what you did, being Willie Lickle, then you need to teach your daughters Amen. that game. Amen. Because there's some games out there. Amen. She fine until the next morning. Come on, come on. <laughs> but it is. A mother should never say to her, to her children, oh, you just, and I hate to hear that, wait till your daddy get home, he gonna get you. <laughs> Why? Because now you make the daddy the bad guy. Yeah. Every time, oh, here come daddy, let's run. He, he, he the discipline, but you should have been disciplined because you and your husband have already agreed this ain't gonna go down at our house. Yeah. Amen. And so in the absence of your father, you let anything, in the absence of the man, you let anything go on. So when the father got to come home and put some oil in the house, then they, then they look at the father as the bad guy, and you make him, the children hate him. Because you're not doing what you're supposed to do, Eve, right. and that's staying back out. Yeah. You see, the family is only husband and wife. The children are the offspring of the family. And so when God sanctioned the marriage, he had, there were no children in his order. It was husband and wife. Then come the children. And so, Eve, you got to stick by Adam and stay in agreement with Adam that this is the way we going to run our house because I'm here to help you, Adam. I ain't here to hurt you. But you hurt Adam when you don't stand next to him and what you guys come up with and you say, well, here come your daddy. He's going to beat you. But me and we also can't wait until our children do something wrong to spend time with. Because then also you become the bad guy. Yeah. If you're the man, be the man. Yeah. Men have to love. We have to teach. We have to foster the relationship of Jesus Christ with our entire home. And I believe today, saved and unsaved families take these scriptures, y'all, so lightly. They, they act like this doesn't pertain to our home anymore. All right. I believe that's why the divorce rate between Christians are higher than the unsaved people. Sure, we blame Christians, I mean, we blame Satan, but it's not Satan who's the 
inside in the houses. It's the lack of order in our houses. Satan can only do to a Christian what a Christian allow him to do. Why? Because we got power over Satan. Because we have a father. That said every knee will bow. We have a father that said every tongue will confess. On earth and under the earth. And since the power of God is in you, now you have power to sustain from that which belongs to Satan. So don't blame Satan when your house is upset. Blame your lack of knowledge and your lack of obedience to God. Christians must stop refusing to grow in Christ. Men, we don't come to Sunday school. We don't come to Bible study. We don't come to church. We'd we rather send our children to Sunday school, send our wives to church, and I'll meet you later when you get home, and we'll go to the beach and make a family day. No, baby, family on Sunday morning ought to start in Sunday school. Amen. Amen. Family starts in the church of God. Now, this ain't a place you come looking for women either. This ain't the, this ain't the nightclub. But this is the place where Christians do be. And then we ain't got to put a dot com on the back of it. Come on, come on. And maybe our children will adopt to the, to, the, to the order of God and not the order of the world. I'm going to let you go home. In verse 22, 24, it says this. Bond servant, obey all things your masters according to the flesh. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the sincerity of heart fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, mm -hmm. knowing that from the Lord you will receive a reward of inheritance, for you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's more important for a Christian to carry out the mission and whatever God finds you in, then you work so hard to get out of that mission to be who you want to be. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7. You have to say amen. amen. Read that. See, there's nothing wrong with wounding belt. In fact, God wants us to prosper and be better. But when you're focused on prospering, brothers and ladies, you're not focusing on ministry. And when you're not focused on ministry, you're not focusing on the kingdom. And when you're not focused on the kingdom, you ain't focusing on God. And when you're not focused on kingdom, God, or his king or his word, then you're focusing on yourself. And yourself didn't save you. Jesus said, I bought you for the price. And I don't know about you, I'd rather be bought by God than be owned by Satan. Come on, come on. God uses people. Gideon was a farmer. Dorcas was a seamstress. Luke was a doctor. Daniel was a government official. Lydia was a businesswoman. Some of y'all, whatever God has called you to, you hear me say it all the time, make that your ministry. You don't have to be a grandiose. You don't have to be somebody who you're not. God saved you right where you at for a purpose. Yeah, yeah. He's wanting to use you. The Bible says the Lord will reward such with an inheritance. What is that inheritance God talking about? What is that inheritance that God has for you and I? Mm -hmm. Revelations chapter 22. Read that with me. And behold, come coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs, sorcerers, sexual immoral, 
and murders and idolatry, who loves and practice a lie. Go to 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root of the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. Go to 17. And the Spirit and the Lord say, Come, and let them who hear say, Come, and let them who thirst come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of my freedom. Doors of the church. It's open. Amen. Everyone stand. I didn't say it. The word of God said it. There's order in the house of God. I struggle with preparing this message. But God blessed me by showing me how important it is for me to teach you to get your house in order. Get your house in order because he is coming. And if your house out of order, then you out of order. And if you're not in order, Jesus said, I'm coming with that reward. And how do we ever expect to get that reward unless we belong to him? If you're not saved, I'm going to ask you today to come and give your life to Jesus Christ. If you are not saved, then that didn't even apply to you. Because we're talking about Christian homes. We're talking about a place where God has ordained. A place where God dwells. But if you want God to dwell in your home, you first got to belong to him. So come today and give your life to Jesus Christ. You may be saved, but you don't have a house of God to work. You don't belong to a local church. Let unity be the church of your choice. Come. Come while the blood is still warm in your body. Come consciously. Hallelujah. And make a decision. Come make a decision today. Let God be your let this be your home.
still playing.